Captain Claw. Now, today we're looking at another obscure game that probably not many of you know about. The game is Claw, or Captain Claw, or Captain Paisuri, or Jazz Jack Rabbit with a sword. Captain Claw was made by Monolith, the same people who made this, and this, and unfortunately this. After finishing making the masterpiece that is Blood, the Monolith CEO decided they wanted to make a game that was a little bit more kid friendly. What, you're saying this isn't kid friendly? Here, let me get a kid. Here, hey, kid. What? Well, uh, come here. What? Well, uh, watch uh, this. Okay, okay, okay. Hey, watch the game now. Mommy, why the men spill red Kool Aid? Where do babies come from? Why has democracy failed us? You asked too many questions, Jimmy. Jimmy's asleep now. So Captain Claw was actually released on the same month as Blood. Instead of an FPS, we got a 2D side-scroller. The game is about Nathaniel J. Claw, a pirate who is going after the nine MacGuffins in order to make him the most powerful pirate in, uh, Pirateville. This story is told to us by some really good-looking cutscenes. Clear the debris! Clear the debris! Reload cut and give him another run from our front side! I love this one frame of Claw. He looks like Grumpy Cat. I know this is the part where I'm supposed to make fun of the acting or the lines or the animation, but there's really nothing to make fun of. All this shit is solid. An effort was made. Good job. So our first cutscene shows Captain Claw's crew losing to the Cocker Spaniards. I didn't make that up. That's actually what they're called. He gets locked up in a cell awaiting execution when he finds something in the wall. It's a map. Where do you win? No! It's part of a map that will lead him to the gems he needs to put in an amulet that will give him amazing power. That power being the power to win the game. The Nine Lives Amulet? I can't believe it. Could it be true? Hmm. Probably not, but just in case. Okay, I've gone this far without saying it, and if I go any further, you're gonna say it in the comments. That's Stefan Way. The man, the myth, the Caleb. The man with a voice much more memorable and iconic than Duke Nukem, don't at me. There's got to be a way out. So here you go, here's Captain Claw. It's a 2D side-scroller. You start left and go right. There's a lot of treasure in this game that's a lot like the coins in Mario. It just racks up the score, and there's no point to getting it other than 100% completion or extra lives, which you are going to need. There's a few ways you can go about defending yourself. You got the basic bitch sword, you've got dynamite, you've got a gun, you can pick up explosive barrels and throw them at people, and you've got Magic Claw, a beam of magical shit that kills everything in its path. And you can spam it really fast if you want to, so you have the superpower to do this. The first level does a decent job of showing you the ropes and giving you an idea of what all the power-ups do. It seems to give them to you quite generously. Get the catnip. It gives you double damage and a higher jump. Of course, you won't really notice that in this level because all the enemies only take one hit in this level anyway. Wah, wah. You'll find yourself going through the first level really quick and get it in your head that all the levels are going to be this easy. So this is where the review ends, if that would have been the case. But if you notice, we're only at the 3.30 mark on this video, and there's a lot of fucking time left. Yeah, I have a few things to say. It is now level two, and if you notice, those enemies that were in level one, they don't take one hit anymore. The gun guys are a little bit smarter than they used to be. Now they can crouch and shoot, and they shoot a little faster. But as long as you have bullets for your gun, they're kind of a pushover. But you will run out of ammo, and once you do, these guys become a serious threat. You have to start timing your movements to get as close as you can to them. Which I found kind of hard to do, because I don't know if I'm blind or what, but I cannot see the projectiles half the time. That is a major problem. The worst is when it's projectiles coming out of the wall. Balls. Sometimes I'll just have too much going on at one time to be paying attention to when those projectiles come out and I'll get hit every time. That's like going to the gay bar just so you can use the restroom, but there's like nine fucking glory holes. One of them some bitches is gonna hit you. It was 3 a.m. I was on the interstate. Nothing else was open. Oh, I haven't even started about the platforms yet. Ooh, let 
me tell you about them platforms. Almost every level in the game has these disappearing platforms that reappear only for a micro fraction of a zepto second. Google it. What's that? That's not bullshit enough? Well, how about platforms that immediately begin to crumble and are gone faster than Bill Clinton when he finds out the condom broke? Kids, always remember, put your ship in a bottle and wrap up your Long John Silver. This will take perfect timing. And now we got platforms that have spikes on them. I mean, I know what they want me to do, and I'm doing it. But what the hell you want me to do right here, some bitch? This is what needs perfect timing right here. I got to where I started jumping on the edges of the platforms. Uh, I've done used up on my what a thrill jokes. How about the fact he's going down? Look at this shit when I go up this ladder. Six fucking enemies waiting on your ass. And all of them throw projectiles. Can you believe that? This is basically what just happened. That one clip could sum up this entire game. But it's not just the death trap that pisses me off, it's the journey to it every time. There is a checkpoint right at that death trap, but if you run out of lives in game over, you can't start at that checkpoint again. But you can't start at a checkpoint. There's checkpoints and then there's checkpoints that are save points as well. It's kind of weird. So to get back to that death trap to try to fight it again, I gotta go down this damn ladder, go up another ladder, get past the spikes, get past more spikes, Spikes, then get to the death trap, then get my ass kicked. Wait, what the fuck am I doing? I have dynamite. <laughs> Let me take a break of shitting on the difficulty of this game by shitting on the difficulty of the boss battles. The first few bosses in this game are kind of pushovers. The first one, LaRoe, if you're able to stun lock him, you could just beat the shit out of him easily. And he's only got one attack, so it's kind of easy to figure him out. I mean, look at this shit. I'm not even pushing forward or anything. I'm just pushing the sword button. I won by doing what I do best, standing in a corner like an idiot. If there's one enemy I thought was funny, it'd have to be this guy. He says as he gets a sword up his butt, I hate these freaking seagulls, man. They're always out of reach when you're trying to hit them, and they're always put in the worst possible places. I'll tell you what else I used to hate in these old games. Decoration in the foreground, covering up where I'm trying to move. Here's a more extreme example. Can't hardly see what you're doing. Okay, monolith, level designers. We need some decoration for this level. It's not quite like lively enough. Maybe something in the foreground that kind of moves around, you know? Let's ask Donnie. Donnie, what are we going to do? We're going to build a wall. Oh, come on. That's been your answer to everything today. And are you sure I haven't seen you before somewhere? One of the really annoying enemies is the damn hermit crabs. They'll get like under their shells and they only ever come out to attack you. Kind of like those things in Mega Ma- What? Well, now what's this game doing? Yeah, apparently if you duck for long enough, the camera will try to go down. I wish it didn't do that. It does it at the worst possible time. Oh, look at this bullshit. We've got disappearing platforms. We got seagulls. We got cannons shooting at me. Death in 31 flavors. Let's try that again. Again. Okay, now let's try it with 99 magic claws. I don't know, the sound clip is awesome, but I just noticed these are just wave files. I wonder. Pocket sand. Pocket sand. Pocket sand. Hey kids, have you ever wanted to end your life? Well, now you can. You can commit suicune at any time. Now you may ask yourself, what does this accomplish? Absolutely nothing. You know, I did mention a lot of the bosses are easy, but they start getting challenging starting with this guy. He's on a ship and you can't get to him, so you have to get on these stupid platforms and hit a switch which fires a cannon that hits him. All the while, the platforms are disappearing, he's throwing crap at you, enemies are spawning under you. Fuck me. Three shitty platforms platforms, three exploding projectiles, two spawning bad guys. Where's the partridge in the pear fucking tree? At least his death dialogue when you beat him is fucking hilarious. I have a
For a split second, I thought his heart came out, climbing out of his body and flying away like a bat out of hell. Now, I spent a little bit of time getting to know the Claw community. There is one. There's an old, old website that's still up called the Claw Recluse, which is the biggest fan site for Captain Claw. They even have a download for the game that works in Windows 10. Anyway, their Discord community that knows this game in and out, they've pretty much made it their bitch, informed me that there's a secret way to kill this boss. There's a cheat that allows you to jump twice as high, and if you do so, you can jump on the ship with the boss. If you do it right, you can not only pick him up and throw him off the ship, but you can also throw him off the side of the pier, and you instantly win. The reason they gave me for this is hilarious, I quote. He has no legs, so he can't swim. Him, so he just drowns. Now that's funny. You know what the worst enemy in this game is? One you cannot kill. It's called the arrows. Fuck the arrows. In this particular level, you can't even hardly see them because they're the same color as the background almost. And they move so damn fast by the time you finally see them, you can't react fast enough. Man, Monolith got way too trigger happy with these fucking arrows. They put them everywhere. Don't believe me? Watch this. This shit. How the fuck are you supposed to dodge that? What kind of Kaizo shit is that? Guys, here's the deal. I'm trying to like this game. I really am. Because I like the art style. I like the cutscenes. I like the music. I like all that stuff. I, I really wish that I could like this game. But it's just making it so hard. You know what this game is really similar to? Dark so No. You know what it's really like? A bad girlfriend. You want to love it. You tell yourself it's fine. They're fine. It's just me. It's my my fault it's bad. I'm making it bad by not doing it right. But your friends see you suffering. You know you're suffering. And they keep doing and saying really stupid things. Yet you keep coming back for more because you're convinced you love them. But they make it oh so hard to love. This game is a bad girlfriend. The kind that would turn a man gay for life. How's that for a review? This game turns people gay. And in the words of Billy Mays, I'm not done yet. The last couple of levels in the game is where it reams your ass with an iron fist and then shakes your mama's hand with it. Welcome to hell, thy name is Claw. In this level, they go way overboard with the discipline appearing platforms. In this one area, if you fall off the platforms, instead of instantly giving you the sweet embrace of death, it puts you in a pond with fish that drain the fuck out of your health. If you get past that, you have to ride these overly fast platforms back to a waterfall with more disappearing platforms, then back to where you were. This was the one spot I found the end life thing to be useful, because it would restart me at the checkpoint in front of the platforms. That felt good. Oh God, this motherfucker. Oh, I hate just watching this footage. Where do I begin? Okay, first off, he has a wind attack and there's spikes on the wall. He throws knives at you and he shoots you. The only way you can defeat him is with your sword. None of your items work. The game has coded him in such a way that you can only hit him twice and then he's invincible for a minute. So you have to hit him twice, run away from him, hit him twice, run away from him. It's a cycle. But the real butt breaker about this is he hurts you if he touches you. And if he's under or over you, he will intentionally jump towards your direction so he'll touch you. His patterns seem to be completely random, so I don't really know of any real method to kill him. The only way I even killed him in the game was he got stuck on this cycle where he was jumping up and jumping down, and I would hit him as he came back up. I looked at the footage. It took me half an hour to beat this damn boss. And you want to know the worst part? He's not the hardest boss in the game. This is difficulty incarnate. This level is harder than Chris Chan in a women's locker room. And he's sniffing the underwear. Yeah, I changed that sound effect too. You want to know the weird thing though? It's not the boss himself that's hard. It's the level and the conditions of how to beat him. Are you sitting down for this? Okay. Here's how this shit went down. 
Okay, so the final boss, his name is Omar. He has a shield around him with a small opening. There's three swords on the level. Oh yeah, I just realized I never mentioned the swords. There's three elemental swords in the game and they all do basically the same thing as pocket sa I mean magic claw, except you only get them for a limited time. Well, anyway, his shield is fire, so that means you need to get the Frost Sword. How do you get the Frost Sword? By kaizoing your way through disappearing platforms. How many times have I said disappearing platforms in this review? When this video is over, there's going to be a disappearing game on my hard drive. Ugh. Anyway, you hit him with the Frost Sword, then his shield turns to ice, so you need the Fire Sword. You go through another pit of a hundred types of horse shit and get that one and die. And die. And fucking die, 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 my my darling. You want to know the best part? You want to know the absolute wonderful thing about this? It doesn't keep your progress each time you die. You have to go back and do all this shit again every single chicken fucking time. So you hit him with the ice, you hit him with the fire, now what? Oh, but the shit show ain't over yet. Now, you have to jump over pools of lava that shoot it up at you in the middle while he's throwing big projectiles at you, and while that's going on, your cat is meowing at your door, and your dog is barking at something outside, your dad is texting you every five seconds wanting you to look at this epic boomer meme he found on the Facebook, and your Discord notifications are going crazy because everyone wants to know if you're okay because you posted some really concerning vents on Twitter, and the mailman is knocking on your door scaring the shit out out of you and your phone is ringing because you're late on a payment on a car that you don't even own and your anxiety is going off because your friend just used the word your instead of y-o-u-r-e what the fuck is wrong with people do they not teach anything in school anymore So anyway, I beat the boss. He then puts the eight MacGuffins into a tray, and then suddenly a cat god appears. Hello, Nathaniel Joseph Claw. I am Princess Adora. Wasn't there actually a cat god? Yeah, Bastet. I remember this because my mom had a figurine of Bastet on her fireplace and didn't know it was a god, but when she found out, she threw it away, and it reappeared on her fireplace. Leave it to my mom to anger a cat god. The cat champion who wears this amulet we wields incredible magical power and is granted by the deities a true nine lives, the closest any mortal creature can come to immortality. Nine lives? Let me tell you something, I blew through 900 lives trying to beat this damn game. And I hate to break it to you, Claw, but when you play Bubsy, you start with nine lives. I'm dead serious. You know, at least I can say Claw has a life bar, Bubsy has one hit death, and fall damage. Fuck that. Ah! There it is! It's the credits! Yes! That's it, boys! I have beaten Captain Claw! I did it! I am the master! And you know what else? This review is... Wait... Wait what the fuck is that music? Hold on just a minute. A lying scoundrel ye be. And you're full of shit, too. I, I don't know what you're talking about. You didn't really beat Omar, did you? Yes, I did. You know, lies make pirate Jesus cry. I, I did. I beat him. I won fair and square. I only used five cheats. All right, you scurvy coyote. Where's your proof? I, uh, well, the thing, uh, my dog ate the file. Then do you mind telling us how you did it? Okay. Uh, well, you see, as it turns out, there's not three elemental swords, there's four. The fourth one is the, uh, uh, magnet sword. Magnet sword? Yeah, magnet sword. You see, Omar has a pacemaker, and when I used the magnet sword, it shut it off. He had a heart attack, and I won. Okay, so maybe I used the level skip code, so what? Look at ah! Ow! The pain! The unbearable pain! Pirate Jesus. Okay, maybe it's not the end. Now, the video would end here if I only talked about the base game and how much I suck at it. I mean, let's be real. Half the problem is I suck. I know this because there are people oh so much more godly than I that can play this game and speed run without losing a life. That's gamer pussy I will never get. That said, this review would do an injustice to Claw if I didn't mention what the community has done to this game. For one, they've made a playable turnkey version that you can play in Windows 
Windows 10, so now you don't need to patch it more than an easy set pool murdered by a horde of cats. Also, they've designed a map editor based on the program that Monolith used to create the levels in Claw. That's right, custom levels. But this game is somewhat obscure. How many custom levels could there- SON OF A TOE-SUCKING BITCH! When you download the patch version of this game, you get a folder that has over 500 freaking custom levels you can play if you so wish to do so. Dating from 1997 all the way up to 2020, and they're still making them. The people that love this game really love it, and I have to appreciate that. Now you may wonder, was there ever a follow-up to this game? Sequel of any kind? Well, kind of. You see, a Claw sequel was in development that was going to use the LithTech engine, and at one point was going to be called Claw 3D, but it never went past a short LithTech engine demo. The game itself was later sold to a company called Techland, which rebranded it as its own game called Nikita. Hello. Nikita, the mystery of the hidden treasure. Maybe I'll review that one day if I want to make another video I know damn well will get zero views. I have an artist friend who draws furries that look exactly like this. I need to ask him if he worked on this game. And with that, I think I've had enough claw to last me a lifetime. Now I'm off to see if Captain Claw has a tag on E621. He does. If you somehow found this hillbilly scallywag entertaining, you might want to subscribe. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta sail to Pirate Bay and get the Pirate Housewives gone wild, Torrent. It's rated R. I told you not to make that joke. Whoo, boy. This episode almost did not happen. My project file started acting up, so I had to quickly render like half of the video to take some of the strain off my computer. But here it is. It's done and on time too and I've already got another one I'm working on. I got a job here recently, by the way, so I'm no longer laid off from my job with no penny to my name, but only time will tell if it'll impede my progress in making these videos. So far, it hasn't. Anyway, that Gianni, he's a hell of a voice actor, ain't he? Y'all liked him so much last time, I reckoned I'd get him again. Well, anyway, the video's over, and it's time to shout out my patrons. So howdy, howdy, howdy to Cherry Orchard, Slayer Coon, Frederick Strum, Harry Amorous, Ferrer, the Gecko, Furry Butler, Joshua Kerrig, Royal Vavian, Rush Nerd, and Shibazin, Commissar Elusive, Project Godzilla, and Vertaro. Thank y'all so much. I appreciate it 100%. Anyway, I'm Stuart K. Riley. This is Working Man Games, and I will see y'all later.